Here we are. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today in a discussion about um, OpenStack and Hyper-V. My name is Peter Puglia, and I'm a senior SDED with uh, Microsoft, uh, responsible for uh, community management of OpenStack, uh, as well as uh, testing. Um, with me today is Alessandro Pilotti, one of the key contributors uh, for the Folsom release, and uh, one of the key people responsible for helping us bring back uh, Hyper-V support within the OpenStack um, code base. So mm -hmm. thanks for joining us today. Um, thanks for coming to learn about Hyper-V. All right, so six months ago, uh, I came to the San Diego Summit um, with a couple goals in mind. Okay, I just started at Microsoft at the time, and, and uh, obviously we had a lot of challenges uh, ahead of us. Uh, one of the, the key goals was to organize a community uh, specifically to support and maintain the OpenStack Hyper-V integration. Um, the other key, uh, one of the other key pieces was to actually get that uh, code reintegrated back into the release, uh, followed by, uh, you know, the obvious one of making Hyper-V the best possible hypervisor you could use within an OpenStack environment. You know, <laughs> looking, looking back at it now, we, we've had a, uh, although it be an interesting uh, run uh, in, with lots of excitement, uh, we were able to successfully build the community that we set out to build. Uh, we were able to restore the code back into Folsom for this release. Uh, not only the code that was originally there, but um, uh, heavily advanced or enhanced code that supports new features that uh, are very common with the other hypervisors. So it was a, a key, um, really, really just key uh, success story, I think, for Microsoft uh, in general, our, our just being able to build a community in such a short amount of time and uh, achieve this feat of getting this code reintegrated back uh, into the code base. So, you know, heads off to all the community members who uh, helped make that possible. So, you know, thanks, Alexander, Thank Pedro, <laughs> everybody involved. It was, it was quite amazing to see how quickly and cohesively they could come together and uh, get things done. So it, it worked really well. So, you know, obviously, uh, we just sort of passed the release of Server 2012. And with 2012, there's a lot of key features that we actually utilize within the OpenStack environment. And, uh, you know, here's a list of some of the other features that get brought to the table. You know, specifically, you know, we now have a, a Hyper-V extensible switching infrastructure, which is something we're going to look into utilizing for uh, Quantum, um, as well as, you know, Hyper-V replica, which is also a, a great new key feature that, you know, maybe could have some use cases within an OpenStack environment. Um, the, one of the largest key features uh, that I find uh, extremely useful is the live migration model that's now available with 2012. I think uh, at a high level, when you really um, look at where Hyper-V has come from its early stages to what we have today in 2012, it is a fully baked, ready for prime time hypervisor now with the same features that you would expect from uh, a Microsoft product and something, uh, you know, and that you would expect from any uh, hypervisor in general. So it's um, pretty, I, I think it's ready for prime time and, and ready for, for use in your Folsom OpenStack cloud. So Hyper-V in general, well, <laughs> it, there, there's a lot of, uh, I guess, to, to start, uh, what does OpenStack run on from a Windows perspective, okay? We run on <coughs> Hyper-V Server, which is the, the free edition of Microsoft's virtualization platform. Hyper-V Server allows you to run uh, virtual machines, uh, Linux virtual machines, FreeBSD virtual machines for free. Uh, the licensing model is such that uh, you can use it for free. You start um, sort of purchasing CALs once you run Windows workloads on top of it or include it in sort of your management uh, platform like System Center. And I'm sure there's other individuals in the room that will gladly or more versed than I am at the licensing that could add some value to that discussion. But uh, in general, it runs on Hyper-V Server. Um, there's, uh, it also runs on Windows Server 2012, which is the, you know, sort of the more, uh, the full-blown um, operating system version of the hypervisor where you get additional features. So Hyper-V Server itself has a limited feature set uh, that is uh, a subset of the larger core server platform. So, um, and also it, it will run on Windows Server, uh, Windows 8 as well with uh, the virtualization enabled. So just to introduce you to some of the people who were key contributors to the Hyper-V movement with an open stack. Obviously, Alessandro Pilotti here, he committed the code for pause, unpause, snapshot, uh, suspend, resume, 
Uh, he did the uh, final push for our Folsom integration as well as develop the testing framework that we currently use for Nova Compute unit testing. Uh, Pedro, so I'm over here somewhere in the corner over here. He actually wrote all our volume attached, detached code, uh, boot from volume, and he's been doing uh, some current work on Cinder. Um, and also Jordan Rinke did the in initial uh, Essex integration for us, uh, getting us reintegrated into the code base. All right, so what is OpenStack uh, on Hyper-V? Or, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions. A lot of people think we take a similar approach as to uh, sort of Zen Server and XCP, which we don't. We actually run as an application, a Python application on top of the Windows hypervisor. So it gets installed on top of your Hyper-V node, okay? Um, it requires, uh, you know, Python and all the same dependencies that Nova Compute requires. We don't um, have any other need for any Windows clustering service, so live migration doesn't require clusters or shared storage or anything of the, of the such. Um, and, it, and it literally, we, we utilize a lot of the key features uh, that are already baked into Server 2012. Now, some of the, the key things that we added coming into Folsom, which are very noticeable uh, for anybody who's ever used OpenStack on Hyper-V before, is the ability to actually utilize the uh, command line clients from um, the Hyper-V node itself. And one of the great uh, things you can do from that is actually finally upload images from your Hyper-V server directly into Glance. So that is, um, you know, obviously makes, uh, makes the workflow for provisioning VMs or getting VM, Im VM Im instances or images into your uh, Glance repository a lot easier and uh, cuts out some steps as to what it used to be. Um, <coughs> we also plan on supporting the HDX for uh, the Grizzly timeframe. All right, so now volume attach and detach. So uh, once again, because we utilize native things in the operating system, we're strictly, uh, we need to enable the iSCSI initiator service. Um, that all this configuration can be easily and minimally scripted in either PowerShell or, or simple uh, CMD files. Um, the volume, uh, it, you know, it allows us to attach and detach iSCSI volumes directly to the virtual machine instances uh, running on top of Hyper-V and the same sort of uh, user experience that you would experience with KVM or uh, the other hypervisors. Um, in the case of boot for volume, we actually, you have to install, previously install the operating system onto that uh, Nova volume or Cinder volume prior to actually deploying it into the cloud. Live migration at a high level, uh, each compute node has to have active, dir active directory domain membership um, because of the, you know, the, the security implications of passing the, um, the virtual machine between the nodes, we have to have a common authentication layer for those services, so uh, the service also has to run as a uh, domain level service account. Um, sure, nothing live migration can be easily enabled within like three, was it three lines of PowerShell or a couple mouse clicks. Um, and it's, uh, you know, same user experience that you would have with uh, Nova today uh, for initiating those live migration commands. So all the same command sets, everything's uh, sort of native open stack. One of the things that, and I'll actually let Alessandro sort of address uh, some of this, uh, but I guess I'll start. The, uh, his team created an MSI installer, which basically uh, makes it extremely easy for you to deploy uh, OpenStack uh, compute on top of Hyper-V. Um, and it actually handles a lot of the uh, tweaking and setting of bits that need to be done prior to that deployment. So for example, um, it will register, uh, install the necessary Python components, install all the Python dependencies, uh, generate your nova.conf on the fly for you based on uh, user supplied um, variables or uh, you know, settings. So, and then um, it will also start the service once it's complete. So basically, if you wanna plug this into Puppet or Chef, you can easily roll out your Hyper-V compute deployment very rapidly. You know, just some uh, additional things that he's added uh, to the uh, actual installer is a basically included uh, free RDP um, build that will allow you to connect directly to the virtual machine instance uh, console running on Hyper-V, so no need to put VNC on your instance and use uh, you know, the VNC console. You could still do that and, and use the um, sort of the dashboard scenario that exists today 
right now we don't have that user experience in, but that's one of the key sort of features we're looking to um, bring along and through Grizzly is actually RDP access. So right now here's sort of a, a sidestep that'll allow you to get some level of uh, functionality that Alexander and his team has actually added to that. Um, as you can see, they also added a uh, nifty, or a, a, let's say an administrative command prompt that already has your paths and whatnot preset, so you can use the Nova commands natively and easily without having to go through the extra hoops of uh, configuring. So I'll let uh, the man step up and. Okay, thank you. So first, uh, I have a question for you. How many of you guys already use Hyper-V? That's good. Good. You, Pedro, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> And um, how many of you guys use um, the 2008 R2 version? Okay, 2012? Okay, 2008? I missed some numbers actually because there were more hands there, versions of Hyper-V available actually. <laughs> 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 Kidding. So actually Hyper-V is a product which is developed, developed very, very fast actually. The new version that came out uh, on the 4th of September inc has a lot of new features, okay, that were not available previously, and it's also including a lot of compatibility, okay, with um, open source products like Linux VMs, like uh, uh, FreeBSD, and so on. So it's great what you can do with it. So that's why I wanted to see what you guys were already doing. We had actually a kind of a big challenge in. Um, in implementing um, what we did. Why? For the simple reason that one thing is the Microsoft world and one thing is actually the open source world from which OpenStack comes from, I mean, where the roots are, okay? So, and uh, at the same time, we wanted also to be sure that uh, people with a strong Microsoft experience had the, a perfectly seamless and easy experience working with the product, okay? So we didn't want to have a situation which we were saying, okay, here are the bits, you have to first install Python, uh, then you have to, have to install this package, that other one, then be sure to make a bit be freeze and that only that version is installed and not that other one, blah, 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 okay? We wanted to have something in which the user could simply um, start it, go on by pressing next, 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 and configuring only what they had to do. Also, we wanted to have a tool which was automatically generating all the configuration files, actually talking about Nova Compute, uh, the Nova Conf file, okay? Uh, and beside that, we wanted also to be sure that all the, let's say, advanced features, like for example, live migration or volume management, okay, were actually enabled out of the box, okay? So, in order to do that, the only thing that you guys need is to have a, a um, Hyper-V host installed. It can be, of course, they had the free one, or it can be also the, uh, the full Windows server with the Hyper-V role enabled, okay? It can even be Windows 8 if you just want to use it for testing, okay? Okay, let's go on. So, what do we have here? Okay, here it is. So we have a virtual machine here running on top of Fusion, which is running um, a Hyper-V server, okay, fresh installed. It's of course not a production scenario, it's just a, a thing that we use for testing, okay? So on this machine we have two Hyper-V, so we simulate a migration, we have a dev stack installation on a Ubuntu Linux, and we have a domain controller, okay? All squeezed in 16 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> 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 okay, so the installer that we were talking about. So this is Cloud-Based Solutions, our company, and you can find here the installer. It's available for free for download. You just have to go here, open stack installer, and here you go, here you have a description, you click on download, and you will just download an MSCI file, okay? That's everything you need. And if you want to follow what I'm going to do step by step, here is a blog post, which is showing you all the stuff that you have to do. So cloudbase.it is the website, okay? It's loading the screenshot. 
maybe I have to disable the Wi-Fi. Yeah, that was it. Okay, so you have a guide step by step telling you exactly what you have to do, what actually you are doing, <laughs> just to know exactly what's going on, and so on. And some troubleshooting issues and whatever. If you have any questions about it, feel, f feel free to write me or contact me on my Twitter handle, whatever you prefer. So let's go back to our demo. So here it is. It's starting. Welcome screen. Next, you have to accept the license agreement, which is in this moment is just the Apache 2.0 license, okay? And here you have the first screen in which you can choose what to do. Um, you have, um, I'm reading for you because maybe the resolution is not the best. Um, okay, the first option is the OpenStack Nova Compute itself. Of course, that's the core of it, so you cannot just disable it as an option. And you can choose a lot of sub-features. For example, you can choose if you want to enable live migration. In order to do that, you have to be, um, the, the, the host needs to be a member of a domain, okay? iSCSI initiator service, this is used in order to manage the volume attached and attach, okay? Whatever else, you have an OpenStack command prompt, which might be useful in order to, for you to launch your, all the Nova, Cinder, and so on commands. And this is also something very new. We just added it like last week. Um, this is free RDP. You guys know that in order to connect to Hyper-V, you have to use the RDP protocol, okay? So normally for all the other hypervisors, you use BNC, and for Microsoft, you use RDP. So we had the challenge in deciding how to make sure that from the Hyper-V box itself, you were able to connect to the hypervisor, to the single virtual machines, okay? Linux, uh, Windows, whatever you have there, FreeBSD, et cetera, et cetera. And um, in order to do that, you connect to the hypervisor itself, and then this one is redirecting you to the, to the host, sorry, to the, to the guest. And this is the feature which is part of a VM Connect, okay, when you use the Hyper-V manager on top of a Windows Server or Windows 8 with the RSAT and so on. We wanted to be sure that you didn't need to have a separate machine to do that, okay. And by the way, FreeRDP, and the way in which we are using it here will be also the base of the feature that we are developing for Grizzly in order to uh, enable you to connect directly uh, through Horizon, so from the dashboard directly to the um, to your Hyper-V host. Okay, it, it's working for RDP. We managed to compile it and make it work uh, on uh, Windows, on uh, Mac OS X, and on Linux. Okay, so you can connect now to your Hyper-V virtual machines from any operating system. Here we are bundling, of course, the version for Windows. Okay, let's go on. That's how the basic setup for now. First thing, uh, in order to use Nova Compute, you need to create a virtual switch, which is called the bridge, you know, in terms of Nova. So we wanted absolutely to avoid for you the hassle of um, opening a PowerShell, understanding the command, how to do it, and so on, or having a separate machine in order to use Hyper-V Manager and so on, okay? So this part is simply handled by installer. So the installer will just make some uh, WMI magic behind it for you. So you can choose between an existent um, virtual switch, in case you should have it, or you can just create a new one. In this case, I'm going to choose the only network adapter that I have on this virtual machine, okay? Or if you have multiple ones, you can choose which one to use. You give it a name, and you decide if you want to share it for management or not, okay? On production environment, I suggest, of course, to have a non-shared one. If you want, suppose that you want just to install the service and configure it later, okay? Or deploy your configuration a different way, you can just click here on Skip Nova Configuration, and it will just bring you to the end of the installer, okay? In this case, we want to do everything inside of the setup. So next step is gonna ask you a few questions related to what's going inside of your Nova Conf file. So all you need here is simply your Glance API host. Which is, by the way, in this case, for this demo, uh, the um, dev stack VM that I'm running. Password. Here is the Nova database. You put the full URL. Uh, by the way, we support also uh, SQL Server. 
so MySQL and also SQLite, whatever you prefer. Very secure password <laughs> with a very secure user. But that's DevStack, so it's fine. Next step, some advanced configuration steps, which are simply limit CPU features, which is not a masochistic feature, <laughs> it's simply <laughs> required in the case in which uh, you, have, um, you want live migration and you have uh, different CPU architectures. So this way, by constraining the features used by the, CPU, by the virtual CPUs, you can uh, make sure that those machines can be live migrated. Of course, the best option is to use the same architectures in, um, in all the hosts inside of your um, live migration cluster. Enable logging and enable verbose logging. I do this only now for testing, of course, in a live scenario, we'll just enable regular logging. And of course, you have the log file folder, which is actually where your Nova compute log is going to go, since we don't have slash var slash log and so on here. Here we go, that was it. Okay, what's going on now? Um, we are, I'm speaking, so I hope to distract the demo gods in the meantime, you know. <laughs> 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 so, the idea is that, you know, you require Python. So there is Python, of course, for Windows, but we didn't want you to install Python and then coming here. So what we do here is to install a completely isolated Python environment, including all the dependencies. So even if you have your C, Python to seven directory, we are not messing up with it. We create a separate one. So we are sure that you can actually use our um, um, environment together with anything, any other application that you might run outside of, uh, of this box, okay? And for us, it's also better because you don't have to download anything from the internet, okay? It's just installing everything there and uh, in a completely independent way. Afterwards, it's uh, installing all the uh, Microsoft binaries that you might need. So for example, the, uh, the Visual C++ runtime and everything, okay? Then it's installing whatever you ask. You, you ask, for example, free RDP or whatever else, okay? So it's over, that, that was it. Pretty easy, no? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I said pretty easy. <laughs> Okay, service has already been started. The service name is simply Nova minus compute. Okay, so that's it. If you wanna stop it to restart it and everything, it's just Nova start, uh, sorry, net start, net stop, and the service name, okay. Um. Okay, here is the configuration. I'm doing everything on the command line for the simple reason that we don't have a user interface here. This is the free edition of Hyper-V. So it's telling us that it's running with all that command line. As you can see, it's, there is a configuration file which is pointing to a specific directory, since we don't have slash ATC here. Um, and it's running with the local system account. So we need administrative privileges on the machine itself. If you run on uh, live migration, then you will need a domain account. But, of course, the installer will take care of everything when I will demo the live migration part. So, let's go now on. Okay, here we are on our dev stack machine. Okay, not the, bo the best uh, font, <laughs> probably for a demo. <laughs> uh, but it's pretty easy to spot that here there is the name, oppa, of the name <laughs> of the machine, and here <laughs> there is a smiley face, okay? Which means that the demo gods are kind with us so far. So actually, uh, DevStack recognized that we have a new Nova Compute uh, running, and that is working. Which means that we can move to the dashboard which is indeed here. I have some stuff left from some previous demo. Um, here I have a Ubuntu server. 
I call it um, demo one with a lot of uh, fantasy. Uh, imagination and okay a tiny image I don't think it's good to waste too much memory here p1 whatever launch go networking spawning spawning okay what's happening here we have a glance image this image is copied over to the um, Hyper-V host, okay? And then based if you decided to use a COV um, uh, instances or not, it's happening the following. So with COV, the COW, sorry, the, the image remains there and we are creating a difference in disk in a, on the fly, okay? And we fire it up. So here, the machine itself for the image was like three, four gigabytes. We didn't need to copy it because it was already there, okay? And uh, all we had to do is just creating a difference in disk and start it. So the spawning itself was really fast. Yeah? Yeah, that's yes. using VHD. We are going to enable also VHDX very soon. If it's applying copyright, yeah, definitely, yes. The only difference, but maybe we can continue this conversation later because it gets a little bit too technical. Um, we are using a different WMI provider for BHDX. That's the only thing, but the same APIs are applying. Okay, it's up and running, basically. So if I move here, as I start in my PowerShell, Get VM. Here is our machine running. And beam. Okay, here we have the free RDP implementation. And together with free RDP, we implemented also a PowerShell command let, which will do some magic for you. We have to enable first uh, um, the set execution policy. As I told you, this is a brand new machine. Of course, yes. Save import the module. Now we say, okay, get VM, and we pipe it straight through. Get VM console, which is get VM console is the PowerShell command letter that we created. And voila, you have um, your Linux instance uh, showed inside of the free RDP window. Okay, that was easy, no? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You can use get VM console also passing the name of the virtual machine, the ID, and so on. Okay. Well, you can also go directly and use FreeRDP, which is called the WR, uh, FreeRDP on Windows. Okay. But you have to pass the ID of the virtual machine, which is a GUID. Okay. So it's a little bit trickier to remember it and so on. But that's what you can do, for example, on, on Linux or on, uh, on the Mac and so on. All right, so that was it so far. Now it's time to talk about uh, live migration. For live migration, we need a separate, a second machine. Here it is. So we're starting the Nova Compute license. Okay. This time we want to enable also live migration. We go through the user stuff. So in this case, we are just saying uh, create, a, a create a new virtual switch. Pay attention, of course, that in order to enable live migration, what you do is just you move on the fly in our machine from one server to another. So it expects to find the same resources. 
So for example, if you have a virtual switch which is called external one, you have to have the same one on the other one, okay? It's all pretty common to across yeah. pretty much every uh, compute hypervisor. Okay, I'm going to do the same configuration. So this is actually the same stuff that I did before. Yep. All right. Once again, all these steps that he's doing here can he provides or can be provided uh, directly to the MSI at install time yeah. to offer it completely unattended mode. Mm -hmm. So once again, for things like Puppet and Chef that uh, would you know re really take advantage of, of sort of this model of deployment. Uh, it does a lot of the steps that, that you would normally have to do sort of outside of the actual just installation of the package. So it's a pretty pretty key uh, key bunch of things that are occurring to enable the technology at this point. Okay, here we are going to enable like migration on the open st uh, on the Hyper V level. Okay, so once again you don't have to connect to a separate machine. Uh, running Hyper-V manager and so on, or trying to remember all the PowerShell commands and so on, okay? What we did here is hide all the WMI, uh, let's say, low-level stuff behind. We have some C++ modules running here behind. And you can choose the authentication type, Kerberos or NTLM and so on, so just Kerberos, of course. Um, the number of maximum active live migration that you want to enable, okay, based on the uh, throughput that you plan to have on your memory and so on, same stuff for the storage and the networks from which you are accepting live migrations, okay? So in this case, just for the demo, I put any network or you can specify specific networks only and say, okay, I am accepting live migration only from hosts uh, coming with that given IP and blah, 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 okay? That's actually, we are mirroring here the Microsoft configuration that you can find, for example, in Hyper-V Manager and so on. One important part here is that when, when Nova Compute is running, in this case, it needs to connect to, a, to another computer. And it has to do it also via Kerberos delegation, okay? Meaning that the service itself needs to run with domain credentials, okay? What are we doing here? We create, okay, we join simply the hypervisor to the domain. I already did it to save them some time during the demo. And I have only to specify here the name of the domain account, which is called the OS demo. Another very secure user, <laughs> just for the demo. I, I suggest you here to create a domain account and to put him as a member of the local administrators of the machine. So you don't have an administrator at the domain level, okay? So that's it, and of course the password for the service. Again, all we have to do is just for it to wait and finish his work. Um, the, one of the tricky part, the reason why, for example, we decided to put the username and password there and not letting the user changing them at the service level, is because it's pretty tricky to do it without having a user interface. Uh, the user running the service needs a special logon right called uh, um, um, logon as a service, okay? Which you can enable it also via command line, but it's a little bit complicated, okay? So that's why we decided to put everything inside of the package. And once again, the limited, this limited GUI infrastructure is specific to Hyper-V server. Yeah. If you're running in server core 2012, you can actually run the Microsoft native management GUIs on top of a core environment, mm. okay? Which will basically allow you to have the full, MS, uh, full uh, MMC experience with all the typical Hyper-V manager mm. and all that stuff on a server core environment. So for those of you that still feel comfortable mm. or, or feel more comfortable utilizing those tools, uh, you can, however, you cannot do it on, on Hyper-V server. Mm. It has to be done on server core, server 2012 sure. core. Um, so once yeah. again, that's you know one of the limited, uh, you know, with Hyper-V server, it's very similar to sort of ESX in the standpoint mm -hmm. of it's there, it's the our Microsoft's free hypervisor for you to for you to use and, and build your environments and infrastructure on top of. Okay, um, 
actually, the reason why we are working always here in the demos with the um, Hyper-V server itself is that we believe that it's better to have an hypervisor with a possible minimal installation because this way you limit the number of security updates that you have to run, you limit the surface attack, and actually the hypervisor part here, the domain zero part, it's absolutely just you know, a management thing. So the smaller, the better from the perspective. Yeah, from a security standpoint, you know, running in server core or as Hyper-V server gives you roughly, I think it's like a 40% reduced attack surface mm -hmm. um, in terms of uh, you know, operating system footprint. So. So here we go. As you can see, the, the service is now running with the OS team or administrator, okay? Uh, in order to have the integration, we need, of course, to have both of them configured in this way. So I have to go back to my first server. And I have to change the configuration because now he's not expecting to work with live migration, okay? So I'm just stopping the service. which once again is um, and, uh, turning down the, the Python environment, and then just running again the installer. This time I'm clicking on change, okay? You can use the same one also to remove, but we believe that you will never need to remove it, so it's a, <laughs> it's a fake button. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding, it's working, but uh, it will automatically pu put a min minus one on your website or something. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> live migration. Again, here, since it's changed by default, it's telling you we skip the Nova configuration, okay? Because I guess you don't want to put again all the details. And again, we are here with Kerberos and blah, blah, blah. All we have to do is specifying what's the new user. <coughs> and his password. change okay finished let me see if it's started okay yeah because it's a change it didn't uh, let's also check Okay, primary block assistant, that's not good. All right. Just a second, I'm doing one additional step. In the meantime, while we are waiting for the configuration to go, I'm just switching here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a question. Sure. Oh, go ahead. No, no, we require no clustering whatsoever. These are standalone Hyper-V yeah. instances. There is no clustering technology needed or required for any of this. What's that? Uh, no, with 2008R2, you can't use, there's no live migration functionality. Um, basically, that's pretty much the only feature that, that won't work, but once again, it's still a standalone hypervisor. We're not, you're, we're not uh, requiring any clustering whatsoever. This is literally, we take Hyper-V server, put OpenStack compute on top of it, and plug it in. Yeah, 2008R2 will actually support all the, all the volume uh, work that was done. It's, it's strictly the live migration because there was no shared nothing live migration supported in 2008R2. That's one of the key features specific to 2012. So for us, pretty much our active development, you know, going forward, we're gearing, uh, you know, we're, we're sort of um, suggesting everybody who wants to participate or get involved to do their work on 2012. Um, stri strictly because that's obviously where everything's going, but just for sort of some level of backward compatibility, we've mm -hmm. made sure that it still works with uh, uh, 2008 R2 as well. Yeah. Is the server core or standalone That's standalone Hyper-V yeah. server. Okay. But it runs still on core. Mm -hmm. Any, anything with a Hyper-V, any of Microsoft's virtualization platforms will in theory run uh, mm -hmm. OpenStack. Um, 
but you know, uh, in, in realistic uh, deployments, you would be using a combination of probably either core or Hyper-V server. Yeah, and by the way, based also on customer requests, uh, we are planning also to add the feature of the full live migration, let's say with a cluster. That's depending on basically on customer requirements. It's not much different, I mean, the implementation of Microsoft did an excellent work actually in the way in which live migration um, is managed. So you can choose between the shared noting one, which are doing here. Um, you can have um, with a shared storage or you can have it with a full cluster, okay? okay. You know, ba basically one of the approaches that we were thinking about uh, when okay. this work was done was, was trying to keep it as close to the KVM use case as possible. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't want to try to deviate we didn't try to deviate sort of that far from it. So we, we felt that uh, shared nothing migrate, the shared nothing live migration feature um, adds a lot of value to this scenario because it, it sort of maintains that, uh, you know, sort of the open stack architectural model of, uh, you know, sharding and shared nothing. Okay, I'm starting up the service now. Checking that everything is going okay. Let's have it started. All right, we have two happy faces. So both of our computer nodes are now working inside of DevStick. <laughs> okay, we still have the same instance running, okay. So what we can do now is a novel list. So live migration is not integrated in Horizon yet, so I have to do it here. So novel list is telling me that I have this ID here. So I'm running inside of the standard dev stack, okay, Ubuntu virtual machine now. Okay, Nova show the VM, which is telling me that it's running on um, the Hyper-V demo one machine, okay. So now I'm doing Nova Live migration. I'm pasting in the ID that I got, and of course I have to tell him where to go. This is absolutely standard um, um, Nova code. I mean, we didn't change anything here, okay? We are just providing the computer driver behind. So to number two. We go, and here I'm expecting him to tell him migrating. So it's moving it now to the other host, okay? Now what's happening is that Hyper-V got the communication, say, hey, please move it to the other side. Uh, there are a lot of checks before. I mean, hey, are you sure that it's enabled on both hosts, okay? Can I migrate it? The CPUs are compatible, oh, yes, okay, let's go. And then the cool part in uh, using COW um, images is that you have the base disk on both sides, okay? So you don't have to move between servers like five gigabytes of, of data, of data, okay? You move only the difference in this, in this case, okay? Which might be a sm pretty small stuff and voila, it's running on the other one. Thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't say that it was easy. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. If I click on show here, now it's telling me that it's running on the other one. Okay, that was it for this demo. Um, we yeah. have more stuff to show you, like uh, volume attachment, boot from volume, and so on, but I mean, we had only a, f um, a 40 minutes um, um, demo here. We have a boot there to the far left, and um, I would like to invite you to our boot to come and discuss and ask any possible questions and everything. Uh, do we have time for some Q&A still? Yeah. Are we, are we good on time for questions? or? Okay. Okay. So, okay. So, please come to the to the booth. Thanks, to everybody. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. <laughs>